in session. Hey, Tony. Hey, Janice. Hey, how you doing? Hello, Mia. Marvel. Oh, Mia, Janice. Maya. Maya's hey, in the house. Tony T and Bob Don. And then there's AJ and whoever yes. else. Who cares? I'm here. La, la. All right. All right, we're done. Goodbye. Hey, guys. We're on break. That was a fast hey. hour. I, Larry, I used to always do that. I get there, we play one song. We'll say, we're going to take a short break. Yeah, short break. We'll be right back. Yeah. You tell lies even I can't see. Bam. You tell lies and you're laughing at me. I'm down. Down, 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 down. Here we go. Now I can do a concert now, buddy. Uh, Larry is, Larry, Larry's back. Larry's back. He's uh, singing some songs that, that always get you going, don't it? You ain't lying. It does. Hey, my main man, Frankie. Frankie the main guy. Hi, Frankie. Hey, what's up? You don't look happy today. Put a smile on your face. Hell. I'm huh. good. How are you? Hi, Bob. Hey, Bob. Federalist pins in the, in, in the flash. All right. So let me That's tell you good. what's going on real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, we will be announcing the winners next week uh, on the Euchre's giveaway. So all my Euchre pin giveaways are going to be coming for you as only, and they're going to be coming from a guy named Federalist Pins, whatever this guy's name yeah, is. Yeah, whoever that guy is. Okay, now overseas are still in the game because Loretta from Euchre's will handle all the overseas stuff. So okay. it works out really, really sweet. And Sounds let me really tell good. You, for real, I'm not just blowing my horn. When you get one of these euchre pins, you're going to say, you know what? Darn good fountain pen. Felt pen works good. And mm -hmm. real quick, hey, Marilyn, and look at my man, Marky. Marky, baby. Hey. Marky's in the house. How are you? in the house. Troy hey. is in the house. Try Troy. Hey, Troy. Hey, thanks Troy. for joining. Bob, Troy, Troy. <laughs> hey, guys. My man, um, Troy. Did you know Troy could used to be an announcer? Isn't that right, Troy? I did. I worked in radio for years. There you go. Nice. See, Hi, Troy. That, Hi, Troy. That, Hi, Troy. That radio hey. voice going down. You know, he's got that, that elegant voice going down where yeah. my voice is just like me. Mm. Mellifluous. Hey, is there a chance we can see your son tonight here, Troy? I, I'm always a big fan of your little son. What a cute kid you have. Oh, hold on a sec. Hey, Matthew. Come here. I, while he's calling his son, I don't know if the rest of you all know, uh, I, of, of when he took his son to a pen show, and his son bought a pen that was a uh, thought that was the coolest thing. People want to see you. Mm -hmm. Hi there, Matthew. Hey there, you're getting big. There he is. He's grown, Troy. Yeah, he's getting there. He's like uh, growing like a like a we put fertilizer on him. Then again, he's kind of full of fertilizer sometimes. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, where's the oldest one at? <clears throat> Uh, he's probably in his cave. Um, he goes into his room at night and, or even during the day, rarely comes out anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. he, turn, so he turns, Dennis, eight, welcome, he turns 18 next Dennis, week or next month. Gonna, that explains it. I'm going to turn this over to Miss Janice for a while. Janice, take it away, sweetie. It's all yours. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> 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 it's good to see everyone. Um, uh, we are having our next uh, Fort Worth Pen Club meeting on February the 12th. Is that right, Larry? I right, believe that's right, right. Yeah. 6.30. Right. I'll be posting that in Larry's uh, uh, fountain pens uh, next day or two. I've been in school meetings all day via Zoom, and I'm going to have one from 8 o'clock till four o'clock tomorrow. So I'm a little brainwashed right now with all this education malarkey, getting ready for classes to start next week. <laughs> In service stuff, right? Hi, Greg. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Same old stuff mm -hmm. all the time. Just little different acronyms is kind of what it is, but we get there. Good. So what's on the agenda? Anybody with any new pins they'd like to share and uh, tell us a little bit about the pin? It looks like Marilyn has something. All right, oh, yeah. Marilyn, take it away. Oh, you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm scared. I'm scared now. If I had a tail, it'd be wagging so hard right now. <laughs> guys, All right, take it away. All right, are you ready? No. <laughs> I hope you're sitting down. 
Ooh. That's we got the new Perfect. Franklin and Rainbow. Isn't that gorgeous? What is that again? That's a it's a Conklin dirt graph in oh, rainbow. Yeah. Rainbow, huh? Are they just doing mm -hmm. now? Here is the kicker, you guys. Oh my gosh. I don't know who is representing Yaffa these days, but I'm ever so slightly embarrassed for them because I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but they spelt special wrong. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> my God. It's a very I special edition. It's a very <laughs> special edition. And, oh my and on the other side, it has a... Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, it God. is so That's smooth. a collector's it item. It is the heaviest pen that I have ever held. 53 grams. Wow. wow. Almost 11 nickels. That is the heaviest pen. I, I swear, you could kill somebody with this if you do it. <laughs> it is gorgeous, and I love it. And if you haven't, if you have a love for rainbows, this is where it's at. Let me tell you. That seems to be the trend now, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, a lot of pens out there are made of that material. Yep. So the Yovo Steel Nib. It's medium. I couldn't figure out how to tell what what. Um, size the nibs were on this thing. Come on, okay. There we go. But it's on the side, which is weird. Mm -hmm. Is that normal for Yovo? I don't know. It depends on the maker. Yeah. Well, I just wanted price to point on that. that. I thought that would be awesome. Frank, what's a what's the price point on that? Like, Should be the same as far as I know. Same price uh, as the rest of them. I think that I, the rainbow just is actually. I need a smaller pack. The five how much, more. How much, Frank? Uh, it should 75. be seventy, I believe, because the uh, the regular door grass are sixty-five, so that should be seventy. This mine was ninety-nine dollars out the door. So, uh, then my intel call, is bad. Then call Frank. You know better than me. Ninety-nine dollars. I don't have them no. yet, and as far as I know, they're not available. So your dealer obviously knows more than me. Well, I, I got it from Goulet. Okay. And I'm worried about, you know, special being spelled wrong. That's, you know, that's tough. Yeah, I know. I, maybe I Goulet, did, maybe Goulet did get an advance on them because, you know, Goulet does a lot of exclusives. Right, right. He but, does. Uh, but if special's not spelled right on their boxes, you know, I wouldn't be happy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I already wrote Yaffa because um, I had a, an issue with them back in November. I don't know if you guys knew, but I, I won a contest from Conklin. And I, the guy told me to write the address and tell, give them my information. I wrote the address, told the lady that I want a pen, gave her which what I wanted, and <laughs> under my address, and I never heard anything back. And then as soon as I saw this getting, you know, being put out there, I uh, I said, oh yeah, I want a fountain pen. I forgot, so I wrote Conklin. And I told them about the thing, and then they said, okay, that's fine. And then I showed them this, and I was like, by the way, you guys felt special <laughs> wrong. And they're like, oh, boy. <laughs> that's a shame. Oh. It's, all right. it's still a beautiful pen. And the box it is just going to go in the corner. It's not like anybody's going to remember it anyway. So speaking, of special, speaking of special, I want to welcome uh, Tina and Rosemary. Uh, welcome to the to the uh, Zoom. Hi, Tony. How are you? Good. Good. Well, well, Hi, Tina. While we're welcoming them, why don't we start with me uh, and we'll introduce ourselves and where we're from. Take it away, Mia. Ma Maya, go ahead. Maya, oh. Mia, Papa Pia, whatever. Yeah. What, what? <laughs> oh, I'll uh, never get them right. Okay. I'll never get it's them all right. right. It could be worse. Oh, crowd. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a very much a snail mail person. I send an awful lot of letters. Um, well, not really awful, is it? But uh, um, one letter I replied to, it re um, the letter I had sent really made his day. Um, when it in the especially in these uh, times, it's sort of a friendly. I mean, was it? Uh, I've got a quote. I think I mentioned it before. About sort of this. This is an. This is not a letter, but it's my arms around you for a brief, 
Thank you so much. Oh. Uh, you sound really distant. This is not a letter, but my arms around you for a brief, brief moment. Um, Catherine Mansfield, I believe, said that. Oh. I wrote that. So, um, yeah, I mean, your letter is really special at this time of, um, at the moment. So, yep. And to write letters, I use the counting pens. Um, they're the easiest thing really to use. Although I must admit, I did write three words of a letter in a uh, biro. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, counting pens almost all the way. I've got a question for you, Maya. Uh, I, I noticed Dave Burroughs uh, and, and you uh, from the letters that we get from overseas. I noticed the stamps are so much different than our stamps here. I mean, we have some nice stamps here, but I mean, the, the ones from over in England and over there on, from the Great Britain, uh, they're just phenomenal. I, we just don't have that here. I mean, you have, you have a whole range of really nice stamps. Um, but at the moment, it, um, even outside of COVID times, not all the post offices here would sell them. So a lot of people just get the ordinary Queen's Head stamps. Um, but um, I, mean, I suppose it depends where you are and how lucky you are to have a nice post office and that is willing to go perhaps the extra mile to get the, the stamps in for wherever, wherever in the world that you are. Um, but, uh, let's see what I've got. Uh, I mean, come Christmas time, a lot of post offices will have the Christmas stamps. This is, this is one. Yeah. Nice. Um, I still have Christmas stamps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Use them this yeah. year, then we'll, we'll save them for another year. I mean, I'll, uh, I just can't press on that tail. I mean, look at that. I mean, it, oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, so in mean, the US does have some nice stamps. Yeah. yeah, we do. I like those James Bond stamps that the UK have. Oh, that was a pretty bad. Um, let's see. <laughs> There's something special in the. I mean, you've got you've got your stamps, and you've got a miniature sheet of stamps. Um, some of these issues. So let's see what's on. I, I heard how much it costs to send a letter from over there. I understand your postage has gone up, yeah. Maya. Oh wow. And in the perforation, I love those. 007. I mean, it's not really yes. So, oh, I'm so jealous. I want those. <laughs> I think they're still available on the, the uh, Royal Mail website in the shop. Let's stick that up in here. What have I got on the other side? Uh, various ones. Uh, what? I started to use. I mean, it, it seems a shame to actually have to cut into the sheet and get the, the stamps. Um, yeah, uh, Stratford of Pon Avon for Shakespeare, that is. Wow. The problem with having all these stamps is deciding which stamps to use. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> such a huge range. Um, you can use on, on letters, and it really, <laughs> sometimes it takes longer to choose the postage. Okay, let's go to Miss Janice. Well, um, I don't have a lot to say. Um, I must not be very good at being a pen pal because I keep losing my pen pal people. <laughs> um, I haven't heard from three of them in a long time, so I'm kind of down to two right now. So I don't know <laughs> what the deal is. <laughs> it's a problem. It's a problem. I don't know about the rest of you. And this is a correspondence Zoom meetup. So we talk about letter writing a lot. But but I can tell you that I've I've lost a lot where or some have just quit writing. Uh I think so what happened. Yeah. So my worst fear is that the COVID has got to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. Tony. Well, I, I do all the talking anyway, so I, I, I'll go ahead and just say that uh, it's great to be here, and thank you all for being here, and uh, and it's great to see one, and it, it's funny because I see about four or five of my great pen pals on here with, with Rosemary and Tina, and, and Greg uh, is a great pen, pen pal, and uh, it's it's and now Maya also, I've sent your letter off last week, so hopefully you'll get it next, by the middle of next year. 
uh, but we'll see. <laughs> so I got one new pen. I'll show it to you. I got it used. Uh, it is a. Uh, it was used, and I'm one of those crazy guys. I got this. Uh, it's a Visconti uh, Belgica. Uh, it was. Um, but the crazy thing is, the cap has a different number than the than the limited edition number on the back. So some they must have put a different cap on. But it doesn't matter. It writes good. So that's all I've got new. Okay. Franco. Well, the uh, new pen that I have, it's, uh, it's a Chinese pen. It uh, has some nice texture to it, um, kind of a small nib, but it's uh, got my frankly green in it. So I love that color. Ooh, cool. 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 There you on go. The floor in the Charlie's, pen, Charlie's bag. Right. And let's go to Mr. Federalist. As he drinks hey. his tea or whatever. He's this is he's going to drink. Yeah, this is I'm going to drink. That's okay. So I'm uh, I'm Frank Limper, also known as uh, Frankie X, Frank Xavier, depending on my nickname, persona, how you know me and all. So I'm Federalist Pens. Uh, Federalist Frank, actually, I told you guys before, actually was like an in-your-face sure. joke sure. Facebook sure. years ago. But uh, uh, we're Federalist Pens, and I am a former history teacher, and that's what Federalist Pens is based on. And we're I'm here uh, outside of uh, Philly in South Jersey. And, uh, yep, I am uh, Four. one of your uh, favorite local pen Other dealers. Side of chair. All righty, let's go ahead and go to Bob. Bob Swindle. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm from 100 miles west of, of uh, 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 Larry. And I have, I have a, a pen that I don't know what is, so I need somebody to tell me. It's a Schaefer, has a uh, Triumph nib on it. Uh, I don't know. It it it's not a uh, Boudet nib like the Lady Schaefer's. I don't know what it is. Can you hold it up sideways? Yep. The close the close the cap. It looks like a 60s uh, stylist uh, cartridge uh, converter fill, right? Yes. It's got the stainless steel conical nib, the Triumph nib. Correct. Right. Does it say Schaefer or Schaefer's on the nib? Or, or actually, better yet, on the clip. Does the clip say Schaefer's apostrophe or does it just say Schaefer? Schaef uh, the clip has nothing on it. Okay. That's all right. It has the white dot, right? Correct. Does the but nib say Schaefer's or just Schaefer the, without the S? Without the S. Okay. All right. So the Schaefer family sold off to a company called Trifon in uh, the uh, early mid 60s, around 64, it was finalized. And uh, if you know, you guys know your pens uh, mid 60s on are just called Schaefer without the S because it became part of a corporation instead of family owned. So your pen is like mid late 60s and it's called a stylist and it's a cartridge converter fill. It's a cool pen. Nice every to carry. It's fun to write with. Yeah. Yeah, I have them. yeah. And by the way, uh, just talking uh, while we're talking to Bob here, Bob. Without uh, being a, I don't know if it's if it's an ill, if it's wrong to ask you your age, but I think you, I know your age. But uh, eighty, how much? Eighty. Now, for all of you on the Zoom, uh, we think of as we get older, our handwriting gets worse. Uh, this is a gentleman right there that I can attest to. His handwriting is just absolutely beautiful for an eighty-year-old man. Uh, so yes, I, I appreciate your letters, Bob, a lot. Thank you, Gary. Gary Phillips. Who's who's new with us tonight has a great handwriting too. Oh, We're contemporaries. <laughs> I'm a year ahead of you in age, though. <laughs> so, Bob, uh, do you have a favorite pen? Uh, usually, it's one with ink in it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. My favorite answer. That's that's the right answer. Very good. I like that. So do you, now let me ask you this, Mr. Bob. Do you have a favorite ink? Uh, as long as it's red, no. 
<laughs> All right, I like that. So, Mr. Bob, let me ask you another question. It's all about Bob right now. What's okay. your favorite nib size? <laughs> uh, fine or extra fine. And one more from Mr. Bob. Do you like? Oh, you're nosy. I know I'm nosy. <laughs> I can get pretty deep in it too. Really, oh. that nose like Pinocchio comes out. But anyway, so uh, do you like a pin uh, that uh, screws on or a pull-off cap? Screw on. Okay. There you go. That wasn't too yeah. hard, was it, Bob? It was, that was nah. nah. We okay. ought to have a show of hands on that. How many like screw-ons <laughs> as opposed to pull-off? Depends on what my job is at the time. <laughs> Good point. Good point. If Good I'm point. at school, it's a pull-off. Good point. Let's Bob's go favorite paper? Bob, your favorite paper? I already know the answer. Uh, Midori. Yeah. <laughs> Marco, poor Mark. I know it, Mark. I'm sorry. Hey, guys. <clears throat> I'm Mark. I'm uh, Frank's brother, and I'm from the South Jersey area, too. And I'm um, excited to be here and see all the familiar faces I know. Good. Do you have a favorite pen or one you like to use a lot? Uh, I actually like a uh, the way the LeBan uh, pens write. It's pretty smooth. I have an everyday LeBan uh, Rainbow Pearl Series in the blue, and it's a medium nib. So I usually stick with a medium point. And that's what I like. My my paper of choice is uh, the Tamoe River, and and as far as ink, anything blue or black is it's fine. Oh. Especially, frankly, frankly blue. I like frankly blue. Oh, yeah, you better say it. You better say it. He's too well, I use frankly blue in the LeBan every day. So there you that's, go. You know, I write my check. It's a really good match for that blue, green, uh, pearl. I'm always using LeBan that. So yeah, it is. Because that ink matches the pen perfectly. So once yeah. once that blue came out and I, and I saw that rainbow pearl, I was like, that's <coughs> perfect for that pen. Oh, cool. All right, let's go to Mr. Jeff. Hi everybody! Greetings Hi, from uh, from a little bit further north in New Jersey than the uh, Federalist Brothers uh, up here in Monmouth County. Hi guys! Okay, uh, thanks for having me. So I know this is this started as a as a local club, so this is great that we're all virtual now. Um, I do have a well, it's not a favorite. My my favorite, which isn't inked up, it was a procurement from December. Is my Sailor Pro Gear. I've usually stayed to the low end, but the sailor just takes writing to a whole new level. I, it's just a wonderful pen. I did want to do a show and tell with, with this little guy. It's it's a knockoff. It's one of Jin Hao's products. I got one. Yeah. It looks it looks just like a Visconti. Obviously, it doesn't write like one, but it really does um, have a, have a very nice. I don't know if you can. It focuses well, but it's got a it's got a great grip and and it feels great in my hand. And for I think it was like twenty two dollars. And so I know Jin Hao. There's all kinds of thoughts on it, but this one's a nice one. And I I just ordered it. Ha it might come in tomorrow. I ordered a Estabrook. This will be my first Estabrook um, composition. So oh yeah. The, the, black and white composition notebooks. And I can't wait to get it. it on the website, it just looked really nice. It's funny, I was actually shopping for, did I hear it pronounced Laban, Laban? I was shopping for that. And then I came across that Esther Brook and I was like, I gotta have that. So that's, that's the way I went for this week's purchase anyway. So my favorite ink is Robert Oster uh, Fire and Ice. And my favorite paper is Claire Fontaine, which is my my journal paper. Um, but when I'm writing, I usually go to Rhodia. I have uh, a notebook of that with the laser perforation, and I, it hasn't thrown an ink. It, it just takes whatever you whatever you lay down on paper. It, it does a nice job. I know there's so many great paper companies out there, but those are the two I seem to gravitate to. All right, let's move on to Maryland. 
Well, my name is Miss Marilyn Darling. I live just five miles south of Disneyland in a town called Santa Ana, California. I like Conklin pens. I like all things rainbow pens. I have this here Conklin. I have a Urine 401 in rainbow. I have, um, I have uh, my favorite what, paper. What's the address? My address? No, Twisby Iris, I said. Oh, no, I don't have the Twisby Iris. Okay, so I was going to get the Twisby Iris, but there's such little amount of rainbow on it. <laughs> I have lots of rainbow. Um, my favorite paper at the moment is CVS Caliber Notebook Paper because it's cheap and it's awesome. And then my second favorite new type of paper is this here. Unison composition book from Target. It's 50 cents. Wow. And it's awesome paper. And what was the other question? Um, ink. Oh, my favorite ink uh, is um, Monteverde Caribbean Blue. Nice. Nice. All right, let's go to Mr. Troy. Welcome, Mr. Troy. Hey, guys. Took myself off mute there. Uh, let's see. Hey, Troy LaPlante. I'm living in the uh, booming metropolis of Selma, North Carolina, which is right along I-95. So if you're going up and down the eastern seaboard, you probably go within a mile of my place. Um, let's see. And I've actually had the privilege of meeting with you guys with the Fort Worth Pen Club in Fort Worth at least once. Yep. Um, and if we weren't stuck in lockdown and uh, having travel restrictions and being with the kids all the time, um, we <laughs> <laughs> well, we might actually uh, look at another trip down your way because the boys well, have we, been asking about we it. We enjoyed you, man. We had a blast. We had a blast. Well, we decided that if we go again, we're going to definitely plan more time there in Fort Worth with you guys because um, cool. we had a a list of things on, on our vacation plan and the wife wanted to go to Waco. I wanted to take them uh, to, to eat some real Cajun food and Cajun country in uh, Louisiana. And then we went down to New Orleans after that, um, after we went to Lafayette and we went by Papier Plume, did some shopping at Papier Plume and uh, on through into Florida and made a big long vacation out of it. So next time though, that everybody wants to be able to stay and, and hang out with you guys a little more in Texas. So. Cool. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, let's see. <sighs> New pens. Well, I, uh, you guys, I don't know if you've seen the video. I just did a, a video on this set right here. Um, it is um, a handcrafted set yep. by a, a little Chinese guy um, in Los Angeles area. He's actually um, probably an immigrant because he said he was from a town. I had to look it up. And I paid 10 bucks. For, wow. for this uh, crafted wow. set, uh, it actually has a ballpoint, it has a rollerball, and um, and a fountain pen. Cool. Huh. And I wasn't expecting a whole lot. I mean, for ten dollars, it's all cherry wood handcrafted. I said, why not? They're kit pens. Uh, but I figured, you know what? Ten bucks. Ten yeah. bucks. That's a deal. I mean, That's a deal. So, yeah. Yeah. And it had uh, an iridium point uh, Germany nib on it. Didn't expect a whole lot out of that little five uh, size five nib. A little scratchy, spent a little time smoothing it out, and actually writes pretty good. Uh, so um, I got my $10 worth out of that. Uh, let's see, other new ones. You have that Harley handy? I do. <laughs> right there Whoa. is a Waterman Harley Davidson edition. Wow. That just arrived in today's mail. That's uh, I've been, cool. I've been eyeballing these for a while, and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's got um, – at the end, it kind of yeah. looks like uh, what the end of a a, a, a piston rod, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got the the clip. Oh wow, that's beautiful. That is I gorgeous. Have, I have, I have, I think mine's red, maybe, but yeah, they're great. I stuff. saw, I saw these in red too, and uh, I, I was patient. I just decided I was going to wait, um, and it's got a you know typical Waterman nib on it. Yeah. It is a cartridge uh, converter pen. I was given uh, a couple of gift certificates or gift cards for eBay. And uh, so I figured, you know what? I'm going to take my time, scope out. And uh, so I, I found this one from 
a cellar in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is about two hours from here. And uh, I said, that wasn't a bad deal. I got a pretty good deal on it. New old stock, never been used. And this is the box it comes in. So it, oh, it's wow. a Harley Davidson, like the fuel tank on a Harley. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you just lift up on the that little gas cap. And, you know, it just comes a, a nice little thing. It comes with a, a cartridge. It came with a converter already in it. Wow. Then again, I keep stock in Waterman converters anyway, because I tend to buy a lot of Watermans. Uh, but um, it actually is very smooth. It, it is everything I would have expected from a luxury Waterman uh, modern pen. What Probably. what are those run uh, retail? Not what you pay, but uh, approximately in the are they in the five hundred to a thousand range or above? Well, these are one hundred and twenty and up, depending oh, okay. upon who you buy them from. And right. the only thing you're going to find now is new old stock. Right. Um. I I've seen. Uh, geez. Uh. I've seen up. 125 to 150. I, I didn't pay anywhere near that. <laughs> so I was patient and I, you know, I stocked it and before I went ahead and jumped at it. At the, the uh, time I, I priced them was like 295, I believe. But the different sellers have different prices. Right. What's the size comparison, uh, Troy? The size compared to. Yeah, to, a, to a, what is it? Is it comparable to a. Lamy All Star or something? Uh, I don't well, know. All right, hold on. I'll let me pull out a uh, uh, back here is where I keep my my collection. And let's see. All right, Lamy. Since you mentioned Lamy, yeah, or or Waterman, it could be a Waterman yeah. Night and Day or right exception, something like that. This should look familiar. Oh yeah. Uh, typical uh, Lamy Safari. So that's about the length. They're about equal in, in height. This is a lot heftier, made out of metal, as opposed to, obviously, a safari being plastic. Um, but it's about the same about the same girth, about the same length. Um, I will tell you that, yes, I, I like how that Lamy writes. This one here was super smooth. So um, very steel happy nib. about that one. Steel yep, nib. Steel, yep, steel nib. Um, Waterman... Back in the 90s, I think, was really their heyday, uh, 90s up to 2000 for their modern pens. Um, and I've liked pretty much everything that's been a luxury style pen that's come out of the 90s, especially Edson's. Oh, I love my Edson. Probably one of my all-time favorite pens is their Edson. But the, uh, the ones that have the more uh, traditional style open nibs like that, those are... Uh, They've done really, really well with a lot of those. And, and they still have some really good ones, too. I mean, I've got a list of, I probably have more Watermans than anything else. Um, speaking of Watermans, in their heyday, 1920s is probably my favorite period for Watermans. Um, I'm a big fan of Red Ripple. And I, I absolutely love the, uh, the hard rubber Red Ripple. Mm. But I picked up for the first time, also arriving today, um, you guys have probably heard me talk about Antique Digger. Uh, my friend Greg at Antique Digger, he had this for a desk pen. Wow. This is, this is a blue ripple. Um, here, bring this up a little closer so you can see that. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. This is probably 1928 or so. And you don't see as many blue ripples as you do red ripples. I didn't have a blue ripple in my collection. This was up for sale for months in months and i just kept looking at it and looking at it and going uh i don't know um i i use my discount code <laughs> that i talk about on my youtube channel and i talk about my discount code and i actually use my own codes um so i got a, a discount on that and uh it when it showed up it needed a slight tine alignment it's got a um a very rigid nib to it I'm not the kind of guy where I got to have a flex nib. I like rigid nibs, actually. Manifold nibs, um, kind of my favorites. Um, this is um, a big girthy one. On my desk, this is a, a Schaefer, modern, a modern Schaefer cartridge pen that sits on my desk all the time. And uh, this is, so I just said, decided, I, I like desk pens. I'm going to keep looking for desk pens. And... Uh, you know, I've Esther Brooks I've had, 
Um, I've had some Eversharps. I've had a few, um, oh, what, what other brands? Two or three different Schaefer's, some unknown uh, brands. And I wanted a Waterman. So I kept looking and kept looking. And finally, knowing that in less, uh, well, about a week from now, I've got an unexpected bonus coming my way at work. I said, I know how I'm going to spend part of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and order that. Um, and so, and it, it now writes really well, like a slight time alignment uh, issue with it. And then on top of that, I smoothed out just a little hair. Uh, and, it, and now it writes great. So now I've got something I've always wanted. Um, I've looked at the red ripples for a long time. And I said, ooh, a blue ripple. I don't have a blue ripple. Got to have a blue ripple. So that's now a permanent addition to my desk, I think. So, um, I've got that filled with... Uh, Waterman Serenity Blue, because it not only pairs well with it, it's also one of my all-time favorite inks. So, paper. that's my today. Day. How paper, about um, you know, I I pretty much use anything that's on my desk. I do a lot of note taking just on scratch pads. I almost exclusively use fountain pens as it is. But if I'm going to sit and I want to use a quality paper, it's either going to be a Clairefontaine or Rhodia. Um, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, let's face it, they probably come from the same paper factory even. Um, but uh, that, that, that's usually what I grab is either a, a Clairefontaine pad or Rhodia. Rhodia is a lot easier to get my hands on than Clairefontaine usually is. So, All right. That's it. Okay, let's go to Mr. Gary. Hey, well, it's my first time here. Uh, I'm in Independence, Missouri, which is... Uh, Right next to Kansas City. <laughs> to Tony. Hi, and Tony. Me. How you doing, Gary? I'm good. Uh, Bob told me uh, he had a friend in Kansas City, so I guess we're getting to meet. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, been living in southern Missouri, about 30 miles from Branson, which a lot of people have heard of, and the city of Springfield, but moved up here permanently now. And uh, so we're really going to enjoy it, I think. I got a new pen in the mail a few days ago. It's not even inked yet. It's uh, Conklin uh, Endura Abalone. Oh, that yeah. thing gorgeous pen. Yeah, is gorgeous. With a, is that the rose rubber, gold one? It's rose gold, except the nib is black. I guess gold wouldn't work and <laughs> silver wouldn't work. They didn't have rose gold, I suppose, so they they uh, have a black nib on it. This is a, an extra fine. Uh, but I don't know what I'm going to put in that. Something like uh, Lamy Crystal Amazonite, I think, would be a good, a good uh, is match it, for I have, it. I have a question about your nib there. Um, do you find that it's any smoother or less smooth than, say, a Lamy Extra Fine? I, I just got one coming in the mail, so I'm curious. <laughs> I don't have any extra fines. The only extra fine I have is the urine, and it's kind of scratchy. <laughs> uh,